Welcome back to the news today. This is One on One, and just over 48 hours until exit polls in the UK will reveal who won the British elections. Latest polls show the outcome too close to call, but this election, election will be remembered as the one that changed the three-party system with the Scottish National Party and the anti-European Union UK Independence Party that could get more seats in Parliament than the Liberal Democratic Party. The Liberal Democrats uh, have... Uh, perhaps we'll be uh, getting smaller and we'll, we'll take a look at that in just a moment. With me is Paul Gross, former assistant to a member of British Parliament and now at the British Home Office. Paul, thank you very much for being with me. Thank you. So I want to look at how the political map seems to be shifting, but the fact that neither the Conservatives or the Liberal Democrats have a very clear majority, is that a sort of disconnection, a signal of the parties, a disconnection from the street, from reality in the United Kingdom? Yeah, I mean, what I think this election is shaping up to be something very unusual in British politics. We're used to having a, um, a one-party system, more or less, that, you know, after elections are held, always on a Thursday, and then by Friday morning, we know who's going to be the Prime Minister, which party is in power, and, it's, and, the, and pretty much since the Second World War, that's been, you know, it's been either the Labour Party or the Conservative Party who've been the, gov who've been the, the party of government. Um, and in the last election, 2010, we had something very unusual which was that the Conservatives, who were the, who were the largest party, failed to get a majority in the, uh, in the, House, in the House of Commons um, and so had to go into a coalition with the Liberal Democrats, who were the sort of the traditional third party in the British, in the British system. This time round, as you say, it's looking even more um, un-British, unusual for the British system. Um, according to the polls that you mentioned, not only are neither the Conservatives nor the Labour Party going to get a big enough majority to form a government on their own, but it looks like they won't even have be able to form a government just with the Liberal Democrats. Smaller parties, as you mentioned, parties that are seen as single issue parties or sectoral parties are going to be are going to have the balance of power and are going to have a major say in who's who's the next Prime Minister and who's the next government. So if we're seeing British politics becoming so fragmented versus a sort of classic British uh, mm. system as you're saying, what's behind it? Is it the British society that's changed? I think that there has been a, there's certainly a, and I think over time there's been a, a, a disaffection with the major parties. You could go back 20, 30 years and you could see large numbers of people were actually paid up members of the Conservative Party or the Labour Party or even the Liberal, the old Liberal Party. Uh, that's no longer the case. People don't have the same um, tribal uh, connection to a party, and they tend, they're voting on uh, they're voting on issues, uh, and increasingly, um, very successfully. Um, parties like the UK Independence Party have picked up on issues that people right. were very concerned about. Immigration is the big issue for the UK Independence Party and the, the role of, uh, of the European Union in that. Uh, and so the UK Independence Party, which is essentially a party which calls for Israel, uh, the UK, sorry, the UK withdrawing from the European Union um, and thereby stemming the, the, the numbers of people coming in. Uh, from other European countries. When, when I hear anti-immigration, I automatically think of sort of also scare tactics. Mm. Maybe it's uh, maybe it is substantiated, but a lot of times we see scare tactics being used. Certainly in the sort of days leading up to the final polls. From looking at these parties now, especially the smaller ones, UKIP included, mm. is that a, a fundamental element that's sort of tapping into British society right now? I think that there's been a long time uh, that the, the issue of, of immigration and, and immigrants coming in is, a, is an issue that parties have failed to deal with for quite a long time. Um, because in the EU there are essentially open borders, and if you're a citizen of, an, of one European country, you can go to another European country and work. That was fine when it was the old EU of Western, modern, uh, pretty well-off States, no one. You know, there aren't huge numbers of people wanting to come from uh, Germany to the UK. But once the U the EU opened up to include um, uh, the former so former communist countries, poorer countries, uh, Poland, uh, the Baltic states, that kind of thing, they, these people are coming to Britain in large numbers. Now, um, many people would say they're coming, they're working, uh, they're paying taxes, they're contributing to right. uh, to British society, and they're actually doing jobs that other people that, that Brits are not doing. Um, however, there are certainly people that feel uh, the opposite, that they're taking our jobs, that, that sort of feeling of, you know, the, uh, which can be very easily whipped up by skillful uh, politicians. And, and uh, Nigel Farage, who's the leader of the UK Independence Party, has done that very successfully. So another issue, I want to go from uh, the anti-immigration issue to terror, because homegrown terror is something that's being talked about a lot in the United Kingdom, as, mm. as is the case with the rest of Europe, something we've heard uh, David Cameron speaking about a lot, the ability of the United Kingdom to deal with homegrown terror, a growing phenomenon. 
Are, is there any sort of party, you're talking about the issues, that they are running on issues. Who does it look like at this point is most focused and most able to deal with that threat? Uh, I th there's, there's not that much of a difference in, in what the major parties, if you take Labour and the Conservatives, who, are, who w whatever happens will provide the Prime Minister. It will either be David Cameron of the right. Conservative Party or Ed Miliband of Labour. Um, both of those uh, parties, that I, I think, take a similar line on, on, um, on the issue of terror and the importance of stamping down on, on homegrown terror. Uh, the Conservatives, perhaps, um, are instinctively less constrained by um, concerns of uh, civil liberties and these kinds of things that come into play when you start talking about the human rights of, 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 um, of terrorists or people, right. you know, that kind of thing. And in the last government, it perhaps wasn't a good... Um, it wasn't a good time to judge the Conservatives because they were in a coalition with the Liberal Democrats, who are, this is the, in many ways, they're the most hard hardline party on issues right. of civil, civil liberties and this kind of thing. Some 10 years after terror attacks in London, mm. now when we have a sort of new situation, not to, thankfully with one particular attack, has British society, has a sort of tone changed? Because that's a, it's a very powerful tool, as we've seen certainly in, in the United States after September 11th, mm. for changing the atmosphere in elections. So I don't think it's... I, I think that this election is more on domestic issues. Right, and the economy. And the economy, for sure. Um, the, the, as far as foreign affairs, foreign policy is concerned, the main issue there is Europe and immigration. Uh, I think the fact that um, Britain is, unlike, for example, the debate in the United States, which is always about, which always plays into what, what's America going to do with Iran, what's America right. going to do in the Middle East, Britain isn't so involved in, in world affairs in that way. So I think that those issues are not talked about so much in elections. I don't think there's so much of an issue um, at election time. People are thinking about, you know, taxes and jobs right. and the National Health Service, which is this, you know, real, you know, sacred cow in, 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 in British society. So if we're talking about two days before the election, the two major parties, not very, not, no clear winner. What were the major mistakes made in each of them? Hmm. That's, a, that's a very good question. Uh, maybe there were several. Yeah, sure. I think, uh, look, I think both, neither party has, has managed to uh, restore the the um, the support that it once had. The Labour Party uh, under Tony Blair, of course, uh, managed to grab not just traditional Labour supporters, but also huge numbers of people in the centre. And I think I think there's some truth in the in the in that old adage that elections are won in the centre ground. And and um, Tony Blair good, successfully did that. David Cameron. Um, also tried to do that, and sort of in the in the same way as Labour under Tony Blair moved away from a hard left kind of socialist position towards a more centrist pro business position on economics, and therefore got a lot of the people that were turned off by that old left wing policies. A lot of people um, uh, moved or or were inclined to move to the Conservatives because David Cameron successfully made them um, nicer, more cuddly, more compassionate, and less the kind of you know hard line. Uh, if you like, uh, the Labour Party sort of got more head and the Conservative Party got more heart and therefore they managed to get the centre ground in that way. I think in this election what's happening is there's a real fragmentation and there are people who feel that neither the Conservatives nor the Labour Party are, um, are really addressing the issues that they, and that there are other parties out there that are. Right, I want to ask you about the SNP hmm. if we're talking, there's been a lot of talk around the party throughout uh, the election period. Where, where does that party fit in? What role is it going to have ultimately in two days, do you think? Right, so this, so this is interesting because the Scottish National Party only represents constituencies, districts in Scotland. Right. So all the members of parliament from, from the SNP come from Scotland. Uh, however, they, you know, n not that long ago there was a, a referendum on Scotland leaving the UK. Uh, the SNP campaigned for that. That's essentially their, their position is that Scotland should be an independent country. They lost that, but... Um, Perhaps as a, as a weird side effect of that, a lot of people in Scotland feel, OK, we, we, we didn't go with the SNP on this, on leaving the UK, but uh, now it's national election time. We want Scotland's voice to be heard. You know, we're still in the UK, but you know, we, we, we want Scotland's voice to be heard. So Labour, who used to be really, really strong in Scotland, look like they're about to be wiped out in Scotland by the Scottish National Party. So as we started in saying, a, a big shift in the political map in Britain. Thanks very much, Paul Gross, for this. Sure. Thanks very much for being with us. And that's it for us for tonight. We'll be back here tomorrow night in the Jaffa Report for another edition of the News Today. Have a great night.